In ta večir verjamem, da bomo slišali mnogo zanimivih podatkov, zanimivih stvari, prav tudi na področju boja med kulturo življenjem, kulturo smrti in predvsem se bomo dotakali tudi enciklike Humane Vite, ki ima še danes velik pomen. Včasih jo težko znamo prevest v današnji svet, v današnji jezik in verjamem, da nam bo tle gospod Čenon pomagal. In najboljše, da bi kar prepustim besedo o njemu in va jo povabim tako. Prevajala bo pameta Halas. Najlepša hvala za dobrodošljico. Začnimo z molitvijo. Ljubeč in usmiljen Bog. We begin by thanking you for the gift of life. Each one of us here is a gift. Created with a purpose. In Paul's letter to the Ephesians in the first chapter. We hear in the inspired word. That before anything was created, that we were thought of in Christ. And, and that God had a purpose for us to cooperate in His love, to be holy da bi bili sveti, to be blameless, da bi biti preskrivde, to give him praise, da bi ga častili, to live in his love, da bi živeli v njegove ljubezni, and to be with him in eternal life. In da bi z njim bili v večnem življenju. So, Father, the world has lost its understanding of the purpose of life. Oče, svet je izgubil to razumevanje smisla življenja. So many are consumed by worldly definitions. Veliko jih je prežetih s posvetnimi stvarmi. They settle for human satisfactions. Zadovoljijo se s človeškimi stvarmi. Happiness, pleasure. Srečo, z užitkom. But We hear our Lord Jesus say to us, I give you a peace the world cannot give. Our Lord Jesus tells us that if we want to live, we must be willing to, to follow Him. To be willing to pick up that cross. To let go of all of our possessions. And to be willing to be completely attached to Him. So Father, on this very night, we come together as your sons and daughters. Prihajamo skupaj kot tvoje sinove in hčere. Washed in the blood of the Savior. Oprani z krvjo odrešenika. Redeemed in an act of unconditional love. Odkupljeni z dejanjem brez pogojne ljubezni. The great gift of mercy. Veliko, velik dar usmiljenja. So we pray tonight, Father, that we will cherish this gift. Prosimo te, da bi ta dar spoštovali. And that in gratitude every day we will give to you what is yours. In da bi v hvaležnosti vsak dan vračali tebi to, kar je tvoje. Like our mother Mary. Tako kot naša mati Marija. To proclaim your greatness. Da bi razprašali tvoje veličastvo. 
to magnify your greatness and to return to you what is rightfully yours our lives we pray also tonight for those who are blind spiritually deaf spiritually mute spiritually crippled and even in some regard spiritually dead our Lord Jesus came to open the eyes open the ears of the deaf to open the mouths of the mute to heal the crippled and truly to raise the dead to life so Father tonight we pray in solidarity with our brothers and sisters and we pray that all of us in this room who are open to the gift of life who are grateful for the gift of life will be willing to bring that gift and share it with everyone we meet this we ask in the one who is the way the truth and the life Jesus Christ the Lord in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you. First and foremost, I want to express my gratitude for the opportunity to be able to be with you tonight. It is indeed a privilege and an honor. This is my first official trip to Slovenia. I have been in a number of our European countries but this was the first time I had a chance to come to your beloved country. I pray it's not the last. As a matter of fact, uh, today uh, one of the conversations opened the door for me to make plans to come back. So I hope that will happen very soon. What I want to do tonight is just open up a couple of the documents of the church. Now, I know this is on camera, but the camera is pointed at me, okay? So, if you're sitting in the first row, they'll probably see your hands get raised. But, again, this is more for us as brothers and sisters. And just a few questions of you. How many, by show of hands, have had a chance to read John Paul's encyclical, The Gospel of Life? Okay. How many have had an opportunity to read his apostolic letter on the family, Familiaris Consortio? And how many have had a chance to read uh, soon to be Blessed Paul VI encyclical Humani Vitae? A few more because you knew I was coming tonight. <laughs> so what I want us to begin with is taking those three documents and what to do is, is look at a couple of just a simple phrase 
Najprej bomo si ogledali nekaj preprostih izrazov. To be a people of life. Da bi bili ljudje ljudstvo življenja. Now, a people of life does three things. In ti ljudje počnejo tri stvari. A people of life respect life. Ti ljudje spoštujejo življenje. They love life. Ljubijo življenje. And they defend it. In branjo življenje. This is how we become a people of life. Na ta način postanemo ljudje življenja. We do it by recognizing that God calls us to be a people of life. To naredimo tako, da prepoznamo ta Božji klic, da bi bili ljudje življenja. And the only way to understand these three wonderful documents of the church is to place them under this umbrella, people of life. So when we talk about the document, the encyclical of Paul VI, Humani Vitae, he's talking about the dignity of life. On govori o dostojanstvu življenja. And the role of husband and wife in o ulogi moža in žene in participating in the work of God. Da se odeluje ta pri Božjem delu. And many people speak ill of the document. Veliko ljudi slabo govori o tem dokumentu. But so few people have read it. A tako malo ljudi ga je dejansko prebralo. And so they they think that it's a negative document. Mislijo da je to negativen dokument. Speaking about contraception and the regulation of fertility. Da govori o kontracepciji in uravnavanju rosta. But in reality, if we read the document, a če pozorno preberemo, what the Holy Father, Pope Paul the Sixth, was doing kar je Pavel VI dejansko napisal, was lifting up the duty of marriage. Je torej zapisal ali obesedil duty. Ja. Torej, nalogo oziroma dožnost, hvala, dožnost zakona. It's going to be a tag in translation. But to understand that, remember what Scripture says. Zapamnimo si, kaj piše v Svetem pismu. Jesus says, render unto Caesar what belongs to Caesar. Jezus pravi, dajte cesarju, kar je cesarjevega. And render unto God what belongs to God. In dajte Bogu, kar je Božjega. If we are made for a purpose, če smo ustvarjeni z namenom, Just like we pray in that prayer from Ephesians chapter 1 that God made me for a purpose to be holy, to be blameless, to give Him praise, to live in His love, and to share with Him eternal life. In da bi z njim delil večno življenje. This is God's plan. To je Božja načrt. And our duty is to fully participate in that plan. Naša dožnost pa je, da v tem načrtu popolnoma sodelujemo. To cooperate. Da sodelujemo. But often times what happens is people think that the word freedom Pogosto bi ne mislijo, da beseda svoboda means that I can do whatever I want to do. Pomeni, da jaz lahko počnem, karkoli hočem početi. This is what John Paul II said about freedom. To je pa Janez Pavel II dejal o svobodi. He said, freedom consists not in doing what we like, svoboda ni v tem, da počnemo tisto, kar bi jo radi, but in having the right to do what we ought. Ampak, da imamo pravico delati tisto, kar moramo. So, again, think what you've said. Freedom consists not in doing what we like. Torej, 
svobode ni v tem, da počnemo tisto, kar bi radi. But in having the right to do what we ought. Ampak v tem, da imamo pravico delati tisto, kar moramo. So we're made with a purpose. Torej ustvarjeni smo z namenom. A duty. A right. A freedom. Dožnost, pravico, svobodo. So if we truly want to be free, če torej resnično želimo biti svobodni, then freedom is found in fulfilling God's plan for us. Se svoboda najde v tem, da Božji načrt izpomnimo. John Paul again says, Janez Pavle drugi pravi, a selfish freedom torej svoboda sebična, sebična svoboda separates us from God nas vločuje od Boga and only leads us into slavery. In nas zgolj vodi v suženstvo. So when Paul VI is talking about the the duty, the beauty of marriage torej, ko Pavel VI govori o dožnosti in lepoti zakona, he is cementing it, anchoring it in the identity of who is man, who is woman. To umešča v to identiteto, kaj je tisto, kar je ženska oziroma moški. So, what he did is what the church has done for centuries. Počenja to, kar je cerko počela že stoletja. Is to continually remind us of our duty in the cooperation of God's plan. Da nas ne prenehoma opominja naše dožnosti pri sodelovanju v Božem načrtu. So, if I begin again to use John Paul's encyclical on the Gospel of Life, torej v encikliki Jana za Pavla II. Evangelije življenja, in, let me find my paragraph here. He talks about the the commandments. Govorijo za povedi. It's in paragraph number 75. To je paragraf 75. I'm not going to read all of it to you. Ne bom vsega prebral. But what he's talking about is people think of the commandments as negative. Govori o tem, da ljudje za povedi dojemamo kot nekaj negativnega. I mean, thou shall not. Da ne smemo nekaj. But in reality, they are positive commands. V resnici pa so pozitivne zapovedi. Because they help me to be free. Ker mi pomagajo, da sem svoboden. So the first commandment is what? Prva zapovedi je. What's the first commandment? Alright. So I am the Lord your God. Right? There is no other God. Torej, jaz sem gospod, tvoj Bog, drugega Boga, poleg mene ni. If we go back to the book of Deuteronomy, Torej, če se vrnemo v knjigo, ja, Petro knjižo, torej Mojzesovo. 6, 4, verse, chapter 6, verse 4. Aha, poglavi 6, vrstica 4. Will we pronounce Shema? Shema? Or Shema. So, Shema Israel Adonai Eha. Now, meaning simply, I am God and I am one. Jaz sem Bog in jaz sem edini. What is he doing? Kaj torej počne? He's helping us to understand that there is no other God. There is no other way. Pomaga nam razumeti, da ni drugega Boga, ni druge poti. There is one God. Samo en Bog je. And he is the creator. In on je stvarnik. Now why is that important for us? Zakaj je to pomembno? Again, let's use the words of Jesus. He says there is no way to the Father except through Him. Reiterating this teaching that has been given to us by our Heavenly Father. Again, the importance of this is to help us to be free. Torej, to nam pomaga, da smo svobodni. So that if there are people trying to misguide us and misteach us that there are other gods, 
da će nas bi ljudi skušali prepričati da su obstajali drugi bogovi. So that would mean that there are other truths. To pomeni da obstajaju drugačne druge resnice. But yet Jesus says, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. Ja sam potresnica in življenja. Again, focusing us how to live our lives. Torej, spet se usredotoči na to, kako ne živimo življenje. Helping us to know what he called the narrow path. Da da poznamo tisto, kar je on imenoval oska pot. In, if we go to the woman at the well, in, če se vrnemo k tisti ženski privodnjaku, do you remember the end of that passage? Se spominjate konca tega odlomka? Go, and what? Povedi. Ne greši. Right. Basically, go and sin no more. Avoid this sin. Why? Povedi, ne greši več. Zakaj? Because that sin alienates one from God. It makes one a slave to the passions, the emotions. A false God. And again, use Jesus' words. If we want to follow him, what must we do? Jezusove besede spet. Kaj moramo storiti, da če mu želimo slediti? We must pick up his cross. Moramo vzeti nase svoj križ. And he also says that we must deny ourselves. In zanikati sami sebe. It really is about detachment. V bistvu gre za odtojitev. To be disconnected. Ročitev, da se from those things that alienate us from truly being free. So, as in with Paul VI, that when a husband and wife are collaborating with God through the conjugal act in the unitive in the procreative dimension. It becomes a free participation in the creative love of God. To separate that act da bi to dejanje ločili or to impose that which is contrary to its purpose ali da bi delali nekaj, kar bi nas protovalo smislu tega it is not an act of freedom to ni dejanje svobode, svobodno dejanje it's an act of selfishness to je sebično dejanje it's an act of not detachment but attachment To, torej, ni dejanje od tujitve, ampak prilastitve. It's not an act of self-giving. Ni, torej, dejanje podarjanja. Not an act of self-donation. Torej, da se darujem nekomu. But it's a hindrance. Ampak je ovira. It's a block. Za prepreka. It's saying, I know what's best for me. Na ta način rečem, jaz vem, kaj je dobro za me. And again, let's go back to the fall. Vrnimo se k patico. And let's go back a little further than that. In še malo naprej. Let's go back to the fall of the angels. Ko so padli angeli. Today is a beautiful day of the archangels. Danes je dan nad angelom. The great heavenly battle that we hear about in Revelation. Nebeška bitka, ki jo slišimo danes v razodetju. When the now known as the angel of darkness, Lucifer, ko sedaj Lucifer oziroma angel tene, remember basically what he said to God. Spomnite se, kaj je rekel Bogu. When God revealed his plan about becoming man. Ko je Bog njemu razodel načrte, da bo ustvaril človeka. Tradition teaches us that Lucifer said something that Adam and Eve would also say. 
tradicija crkve na nas uči, da je Satan rekel, enako, kar boste Adam in Eva dejala. Non servitum. Ne bom služil. I will not serve. Ne bom služil. God has a purpose for us. Bog ima za nas God has a plan for us. Načet. And when we learn to serve in that great plan, we become truly free. Upon that freedom, we're able then to participate as a people of life. To live as a people of life. I mean, think about the violence we see in our world today. Pomislite na nasilje, ki smo mu pričali v današnjem svetu. Where did that violence find its origin? Od kot izvira? It found it in sin. Iz grehu. Violence is an act of disrespect, disregard. Nasilje je dejanje nespoštovanja. A disregard for the dignity. Nespoštovanja dostojanstva. The beauty of human life. Lepote človeškega življenja. When that disregard for human life continues to grow, it continues to, to destroy everything in its path. I don't know if you have uh, tornadoes or, uh, in your country. No? I come from Louisiana in the southern part of the United States. We have large hurricanes. And I, I'm, I'm 48 years old and have lived through a number of them. When you, when you think of a hurricane or a tornado, the winds can get up to 200 miles an hour, 300 miles an hour. Anything in its path just can't survive. So no matter what's in its path, it's not going to be able to survive. This is the violence of today. And if we think about that violence originates when I can say to Paulina, your life is not of value. Torej, če pomislimo, da življenje, da nasilje izvira iz tega, da nekomu rečemo, tvoje življenje ni nič vredno. And that can perpetuate itself throughout the culture. In se to nadaljuje skozi celotno kulturo. So how do you challenge it? Kako se temu upreti? You challenge it by bringing humanity back to its purpose. Tako da človečnost pripeljamo nazaj k svojemu smislu. Its identity. It's duty. Because God is a God of love. A God of life. And a God who respects that which he has created. Because God knows its purpose. And so it's up to us to seek that kind of freedom. Na nas pa je, da si tako svoboda poiščeno. My father taught me a, a moral value. Moj oče me je naučil moralni vrednote. When I was a young boy, ko si bil majhen, he said to me, how you treat one person je rekel, tako kot eno osebo, tako kot ravnaš z eno osebo, is how you will eventually treat other people. Je na ta način boš ravnal z drugimi ljudmi. Let me give an example. So if I, I'm going to use Paul now. So Paul. So if I can convince myself that I really don't like Paul because of maybe the color of his skin, eventually I can begin to draw the same action against anyone. Maybe I don't like him because of his age. Morda ga ne maram zaradi njegove starosti. Maybe I don't like him because maybe he has a handicap. Ali pa kjer je mogoče v nečem prikrajšen. Maybe I don't like him because he's very wealthy. Ali pa zato, ker je zelo bogat. Or maybe very poor. Ali pa zelo reven. But see, but yet, if we are free, 
a či sme slobodní. Truly living in the plan of God. Then I'm challenged to respect every life. Da spoštujem vsako življenje. To love every life. Da ljubim vsako življenje. And to defend every life. In da branim vsako življenje. And that's the challenge to the action of violence. In to je izziv nasilju. That's the challenge to the the crime of abortion. To je izziv za zločin kot izplav. To the crime of euthanasia. Ali je eutanazija to the crime of murder and war, to prejudice and discrimination, because it gets to the very core that my life is no more valuable than any other human life. And that as a people of God, in takot Božji ljudje, a people of life, ljudje življenja, we respect life, življenje spoštujemo, we love life, da ljubimo, and we defend life. In branimo. And John Paul pointed out, Janez Pavel je izpostavil, in the very last part of the gospel of life. V zadnjem delu te življenje. And I'm going to read it. Bo pregrad. He says, the people of life rejoices in being able to share its commitment with so many others. He says, there can be no true democracy without a recognition of every person's dignity prepoznali dostojanstvo vsakega človeka. And without respect for his or her rights. In ne da bi spoštovali njegove pravice. Nor can there be true peace. Niti ne more biti pravega miru. Unless life is defended and promoted. Razen če se človeško življenje brani. And then he quotes Pope Paul VI. In potem citira Pavla VI. From Humani Vita. Iz Humani Vita. Every crime against life is an attack against peace and an attack against humanity. So, we have to think deeply about this. And so, not only is Paul VI talking about the dignity of marriage, Ne le, da Pavel VI govori o dostojanstvu zakona in njegovem namenu. In the ends of marriage, the ends, E-N-D-S, ends of purpose of marriage. Ah, purpose of marriage. The final is, what he's talking about, again, is looking at all of humanity. Looking at the whole dignity of a person. That we have a purpose that is eternal. It's also something that we pray in that opening prayer. Gratitude. To be grateful for what has been given to us. The gift of our salvation in Jesus Christ. And to respond in gratitude to God what God has given to us. I had, uh, I was, uh, began my college years in pre-med and chemistry. Torej, v srednji šoli sem okončal kemijo, ne? And after eventually being ordained a priest, potem, ko so me posvetili v duhovnika, I was assigned to one of the universities. Sem bil vmeščen na eno univerzo. And I had a medical student 
come up to me one day. And then me, Nicky, student, medicine, operation. And he says to me, I don't know how you, as a priest, can live without sex. In mi je rekao, ne vem kako lahko vi kot duhovnik živite brez spolnosti. So, my response to him was this. Moj odgovor je bil ta. In all of your medical journals, v vseh vaših medicinskih priročnikih, have you ever read anywhere in any of those journals, ste kjerkoli, kdajkoli prebrali, that someone died because they didn't have sex? Da je nekdo umrl, ker ni imel spolnika noze. And he did exactly what you just did. He laughed. And I said to him, why are you laughing? He said, because that doesn't make sense. But why? He said, because the sexual act is voluntary. And the moment he said that word voluntary, his eyes got pretty big. Because he realized what he said. Why? Because if my brain and all of its lower and higher functions cease, to reče, prenehajo delovati moje moštanske funkcije, I die. If my pulmonary and cardio system fails, to reče, moj pljučni in srčni sistem odpovesta, I die. If any of my major organs, like liver, and begins to have cancer, no, no, no healing of it. To reče, kateri koli od mojih pomembnih organov odpove, I die. Tudi umrem. But, and please forgive me for being blunt, ampak bom kar iskren, but we're all adults, vsi smo odrasni, is that, but there is a certain member of my body, točno določen del mojega telesa, that doesn't have to act za katerega ni treba, da je dejavim. In order for me to live. Zato, da živim. Right? Je tako. You're looking at me puzzled. Nekam ste zgubljeni. Now, that doesn't mean it's bad. To ne pomeni, da je to slabo. Doesn't mean that it's evil. Ali da je... It doesn't mean that it has no purpose. Da nima namenu. It does have a purpose. Ima namenu. That the the gift of being male and the gift of being female are complementary. They are made for each other. But they have a purpose. And they have an end. Okay? If I separate them, then I'm going to use a phrase of Dr. Alice von Hildebrand. Alice von Hildebrand. Now again, please forgive me for being a little blunt, but I'm quoting Dr. Alice von Hildebrand. She says, when a husband and wife collaborate with God, it reflects the unitive, procreative life that God gives to it. To odseva celovitost the unitive and procreative se pravi podarjenja življenja. But, when man and woman separate that conjugal love and its purpose from each other, ampak kadar moški in ženska ta namen podaritve in roditve lovčita. Again, forgive the bluntness. Se upravičuje. But she says, it becomes what dogs do. Postane to, kar počnejo psi. They copulate. Torej, da se parijo. Okay? Which means it's nothing more than a biological activity. Torej, ni nič več kot biološka dejanja. Now, this is important because when we separate any action from God's intended plan, it just makes us a slave to those passions and those feelings and those emotions. 
nas tudi nasužnjati s trestim in čustvom. And what happens is people will say we can't help ourselves. In potem ljudje rečejo ne moremo si pomagati. That's what the young man asked me the med student. A to me je tisti mladi mož študent medicine vprašal. He's a doctor today. Danes je on zdravnik. And I've kind of become a second a, a kind of a, a, a Uh, a father to him. He's uh, still single. He changed his lifestyle. He's living a very chaste, pure life. And he gives me phone calls today, two in the morning, four in the morning, five in the morning. When he's struggling. How do I deal with this? So he's striving to, to live the plan that God has for him. And what's interesting is Paul the VI and John Paul the II in Familiaris Consortio talks about that we have to help couples. Govorite o tem, da moramo parom pomagati. We have to help couples to know their purpose. Da se zavejo svojega smisla. The beauty of marriage. Lepote zakona. The sacredness of marriage. Svetosti zakona. And the beautiful gift of cooperating in the act of creation. In prelepega daru, da lahko sodelujemo pri dejanju stvarjenja. And that the couple for their good Uh, in the par uh, v svoje dobro open to the gift of life uh, od, uh, da sta odprta za življenje that the pinnacle of that act in da je krona tega dejanja the jewel of that act uh, tisti dragul is the gift of a child je prav dar otroka to be able then to educate uh, da bi lahko uzgajala in the way of God uh, po Božjem and to lead that little soul in to malo dušo vodila to love God who has given him or her the gift of life. Ki je njemu ali njej dala dar življenja. A purpose. Smisel. And this is what the conversation that's missing today. In ta, tak pogovor manjka v današnjem času. Now, what I want to do is share with you in a, a, a model. Torej z vami bom podelil nek model And it's one that I like for us just to think about. The model is missing. The center of this model is Jesus. To the center of this model is Jesus. The next layer involves when Jesus sends us out. The next plast includes the fact that Jesus sends us out. And that message of life. In to sporočilo življenja is meant to go to the ends of the earth, right? Naj bi doseglo konce sveta. So, let's just think about how we do that. Razmislimo o tem, kako to počnemo. And one of them is, of course, the family. En način je seveda, da imamo družino. We can talk about the church. Lahko govorimo o cerkvi. We can talk about the legal system. O zakonu. Uh, legal lawyers. And ah, uh, We can talk about government. Vladi. We can talk about the media. O medij. The medical profession. O zdravstvenih delavcih. We can talk about science. O znanosti. We can talk about a numerous amount of different groups that can fit in here. Torej, o različnih skupinah, ki... That the message of Jesus is meant to go to all facets of human life. But for the moment, I'm going to look at this one. And I'm going to use the, the, the parish church as an example. So if we want to build a strong family, the parish the priest and the, and, the, and, the, and the lay leadership in that parish should be thinking of how do we help the family? Who makes up the family? We actually have the married couple. 
We have their children. Otroci. We have the grandchildren. Uh, unuki. We can move into those in middle age. Ture, uh, old and uh, elderly, not going to say old. Yeah, ture starostniki in uh, mladi. Right? And so, but for us, for the moment, let's look at these two. Problema si ture uh, uh, zakonca in otroke. In every parish, is there actually some, and I'm going to use the word program, that's to help couples to understand their purpose. And maybe even go back when that couple is dating, before their marriage. How do we help them in their marital preparation? Let's even go back before that. How does mom and dad help their daughter or their son to know the purpose of dating? How has mom and dad help them to understand their dignity as man or woman? I'll tell you a funny story about that. When I was in college, and uh, definitely a few years before that, my dad gave me the typical father-son talk. And after him trying very hard to go through all the explanations, he looked at me and said, do you have any questions? I said, I have no questions, no. He said, good, I have one more thing to tell you. You touch a woman before you marry her, Ti se samo dotakni ženske prijatelje iz nje poručiš. I will kill you. In te bomo bili. That was his response. That was that, that was the way he was trying to tell me there is a purpose. All right? Now I'm not suggesting you threaten your children or grandchildren. To je na taj način moj kao da povedati da obstaja nek na meni. But my father in his own way was trying to direct me. Hoto me usmeriti. But I was very fortunate. My mother and father, you know, truly reflected to me the dignity of marriage. My father respected and respects my mother with the utmost of, 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 of uh, importance. And you can see that that love, that care, that respect in lahko se vidi da to spoštovanje in to skrbe was so integral je tako integralno povezano to him fulfilling the purpose of his love of his care s tem da on izpolni ta smisel ljubezni in skrbi and he was passing that on to me in to je predajal naprej meni in this is part that as a church how are we helping our future couples? And I'm not pointing out this parish alone because I'm not going to put Father on the spot. Okay? But I was a pastor for many years. I was a teacher. And, and so recognizing that in the parish, I had to ask myself those same questions. In the United States, so many couples are cohabitating, living together, without the dignity of marriage. In my last parish assignment, over the course of nearly seven years, I did not have one sacramental marriage. Not one. That same parish, when it was first established, was baptizing 150 children a year. 
Je na leto, ker si stila 150 otrok. The last year of that assignment, zadnje leto, we baptized five. Smo jih krstili pet. The funerals, pogrebi, outnumbered, obviously, all the baptisms. So jasno, bili bolj številčni kot krsti. So, something is happening in the culture that our young people are choosing to live together, to live as if they were husband and wife, and then we deal with the other side of that equation, again using the United States where we have a high percentage of couples who are in the age of, of birth, meaning they are eligible in the sense of age of giving birth. Are using contraception. They, the percentage of abortions in the states are growing. Or have been growing. Splav narašča. So, what's happening? So, how do we change that? Kako to spremenimo? We have to go back to that purpose. Moramo se vrniti nazaj na tisti. But we have to start educating and informing people very young. A zelo mlade zgodaj moramo začeti izobraževati ljudi. So, again, if we look at our schools and our parishes, če pogledamo naše župnije, naše šole, how are we working with young children? How are we working with those in adolescence? How are we working with soon-to-be young adults? How are we working with those who may be married couples one day? How are we working with those who are newly married? How are we working with those who are new parents? And the list can go, grow. That if we're going to truly build the culture of life, then all of us in this room need to think of how are we influencing that world around us. I mean, Benedict XVI said that society passes through the family. So if we look at the situation affecting our families, we get a mirror of what's happening in society. If society is continuing to collapse into violence, to disregard for human life, to disregard for the dignity of one man married to one woman. Then we have to look at where does it all start? The cohabitation issue. A lot of times when you talk to the couple, Pogosto, kateri se s pari pogovarjamo, they've come from broken families, prihajajo iz razdrtih družin, they've come from very bad family situations, iz grdih družinskih situacij, and they're afraid. In se bojijo. They're afraid of repeating what they themselves experienced. Bojijo se, da bodo ponovili to, kar so sami doživeli. And I'm not saying that's a legitimate excuse. Ne pravim, da je to izgovor. But it's a condition, a consequence of how they're making their choices. To je posledica tega, kako potem sprejemajo odločenje. So we need to, again, try to start a new language. Torej, moramo začeti z novim jezikom. Of how we speak of the beauty of marriage, the wonder of marriage. Da spregovorimo o lepoti in čudežu življenja. And to help our couples and our future couples to know that beauty, to know that sacredness. And to be able to live in love and wonder that beauty that God made them for. 
da bi lahko to živeli, to lepoto, za katero ki Bog ustvaril. In to se bo podalo naprej otrokom. In today the language is that children are an obstruction. Torej, danes se o otroci govori kot o ovili. Children are actually in some places referred to as a disease. Ali kot o bolezni. I've seen articles written about pregnancy as a disease. I've seen some of the most physically fit, beautiful women who are so concerned about what they eat and taking care of themselves but using contraception which destroys them and opens them up to a litany of medical problems. In jih odpira cili vrsti zdravstvenih težav. All because of a sense of a lack of knowing their dignity. Samo zato, ker se nimajo samo spoštovanje. The purpose of conjugal love between husband and wife. Se ne zavedajo pomena zakonske ljubezni. The purpose of the sexual love. Pomena darovanja v spolnem dejanju. And the beauty of human life in lepote človeškega življenja. So tonight, basically what I wanted to do is just get us to think a little bit danes skušamo samo malo razmisliti about our work, o našem delu, our activity, o naših dejavnosti. I want to encourage you rad bi vas podbudil to start that if you have not had the chance to read any of the documents. That is the perfect place to begin. To understand what the church is teaching. It was just in a different country getting a conference to priests and seminarians and I asked the question starting out with how many have read the document of Humanae Vitae, just like I did tonight. Now, I was just as shocked as I usually am when I'm in different parts of the world working with my brothers. They're unfamiliar with these teachings. So, that's why there is such, sadly, a neglect in how we work as priests with our couples and young people. So what I share with you, who are the majority are lay faithful, I say to myself also, so that we can then begin to help change the pendulum, the movement of that pendulum. So that we begin to change the negative direction and begin to make a positive influence in the culture. Now, I'm going to tell you a funny story and it's one that comes back from the United States. I came up in a very large family. Now, my mother and father, my mother particularly had medical problems that prevented her from having a large family. I came along pretty quickly which was a surprise. My brother, one brother, didn't come along for seven years. And he was, when I say a complete surprise, a very big surprise. Because my mother was not meant to have any more children. My mother is one of eleven brothers and sisters. My dad is one of 17. My 
dad's father, uh, who is 96 years old, is one of 13 children, and his 13 brothers and sisters, or 12 brothers and sisters, all had at least 13 children. So, we lived family life. And the beauty of that family life. So my point for prefacing that is I love children. Enjoy children. And I have a very bad or good habit when I see a mom or a dad with a baby, I want to see the baby. <laughs> that has gotten me in trouble a couple of times. And this is where it did, in, in, in Denver, Colorado. I'm walking in uh, one of the downtown areas. And I'm always dressed as a priest. I mean, it's rare that you see me outside of clerical garb. So that draws attention by itself. So walking towards me is this very beautiful woman pushing a, uh, it had a name, it was a, actually you can see the name on the carriage. It was a, a Gucci baby carriage. So no doubt a very expensive baby carriage. And again in my mind I'm thinking here is this beautiful young woman, this baby must be very pretty. So I stop her. And she's smiling. Hello, Father. So I said, May I? Sure. So I pull back this nice covering. And to my surprise, I do not see a baby. <laughs> I see a dog. <laughs> now, I grew up on a farm. <laughs> I love animals just like anyone else. <laughs> but, I look down, and I'm thinking in my mind, <laughs> I have to say something. <laughs> in my mind, what I want to say <laughs> is, oh, he has your husband's tail. <laughs> <laughs> but I couldn't say that. <laughs> but it's just the idea that, that, that we've, we've lost the sense of the beauty of children, the wonder of children. And again, it's not about the dog. It's not about the dog at all. It could have been a cat. It could have been a, a pig in there. It didn't matter. It's just that here's this, and she's married. You definitely, the wedding bands on her finger. And, so I, I did eventually ask, you know, uh, is this, uh, I said, do you have any children? No children. And then I was able, I don't know how I got the grade, and it gets slapped, is how long have you been married? Oh, you've been married 10 years. 10 years. And of course, you know, I, I didn't go any further because, I mean, I don't know if she has medical, I don't know that part. Okay? But here is this very, very obviously well kept, very beautifully, physically fit woman who looks healthy in every regard. And she's pushing through Main Street. A dog. But that's the mindset today. And that's, I can tell you, that's not just in the United States. I have seen that in Europe. I haven't seen it here to, yet. I've only been here a few days. But I bet if I sat in one of the squares, I bet I'd see it. So we have to change the minds. And begin to start transforming the heart. And John Paul, in the, in, in, in the document on the Gospel of Life, in paragraph 96, 
talks about reforming the conscience of humanity. Which means we have to help people to reclaim God's plan. Kar pomeni, da, da moramo ljudi uh, spomniti na to, da morajo uh, upoštevati Božje načrt. And I know that your beloved country uh, vaši has gone through many historical difficulties. Um, naš, vaša država je šla preko veliko zgodovinskih držav. Under the reign of communism pod komunizmom we know that any place where communism entered in the threat against the family and life followed with it. So in Hungary, where they changed their constitution in 2011, what they call the Easter constitution, where they recognize the dignity of marriage between one man and one woman and the protection of human life and though the law is now helping promote those two wonderful things. It's, it's going to take years to change the mindset and the heart that people have just embraced and accepted. In Taiwan, where I was just recently, the number of abortions are 400,000 a year. The priests there tell me that couples are just living together. Divorce rate is growing. And the issue of basically one child, two children max. And I know you can't appreciate this because you can't probably see it, but on this cover is our conference in Taiwan for next year. And it's the image of a husband and wife. In the middle are two children. And she's pregnant. When I say that that image was controversial, even among the pro-lifers, because they said it's too radical, not because they were closed to life, but they said that the mindset of the Taiwanese is, is so, so acceptant that one child is fine. Two is an extreme. Three, you must be a fanatic. And so, but again, think of the fertility rate here in Slovenia. Now I know what it is. Do you know what it is? It's not very high. The lowest places in the world are in Asia and mostly throughout Europe. Let me give you an example. The average fertility rate worldwide, which is already very low, when added together, so the average totals 2.1, which means 
three children. Je dva cela ena ker pomeni tri otroki. Three children. In Singapore, it's point eight. Je nič osem. Which means one child for every five couples, four are having children, one is not. Torej, en otrok na pet in Macau, point nine. Macau, <coughs> in Taiwan, point nine three. The reason why I bring that up is demographers, those who study numbers, populations, say, no country, no nation has survived when they have sunk below the average fertility rate of 1.5. Torej, noben, uh, noben narodni preživel, če so, uh, če da njihova rodnost manjša kot 1.5. Now, we are a Christian and Catholic people. Mi smo we are a people of hope, right? We trust God. But what I will say to you is look at the number for Slovenia. If we don't start intervening, the potentiality of the beautiful culture that is yours could potentially disappear. And you might say that makes no sense or it's ridiculous. I can show you great history of where the demographers are. They're doing, no doubt that they are right. So I close with the thought. Give to God what belongs to God. God is a God of fruitfulness. A God of great generosity. We are here because of that generosity. And when He says be fruitful and multiply, He's asking us to share in that generosity. To be fruitful with our lives. And for any young couple that might be here, any potential young adult that's aspiring to married life, I don't want you to walk away thinking that when Father Boke said that his dad is one of 17 children. That I'm saying that we all have, for those of us of younger age and able to have, have 17 children. But what I am saying is what the church says. Be open to the plan of God. And cooperate with God. Collaborate with God. And God who knows exactly what is our for our good will help us yeah. as we truly make those decisions and reflect on those decisions and live those decisions in fruitfulness. In Bog nam bo pri tem pomagal pri spremanju naših odločitev za rodovitnost. In last point, I know couples who for no reason physically fit Nothing biologically wrong with either him or her. Doctors cannot explain why she can't conceive. Which proves the point that there is a third person in this equation. And that is the Lord. Duty, Dočnost, purpose, smisel, freedom, svoboda, being a people of life.
holy, Sveti, blameless, raskriuden. live in his praise or giving praise, uh, da live in his love, živimo v njegovi ljubezni, to be with him unto eternal life. In da bomo z njim v večnem življenju. That is the plan of God. To je Božje načrt. And what a joy it is to freely give ourselves to it. In kakšna radost je, da se mu popolnoma predamo. And that is the heart of humane vite. In to je srce te encikljike humane vite. Thank you. Hvala.
questions and uh, but before we, we jump in I just I forgot to say thank you because I know please if I, it's already late if you feel like you need please I mean no one's gonna hurt my feelings I promise I know it's been long days so I'm, I'm grateful for you staying and, and being here tonight and I'm, I'm truly truly grateful so but I know that you have families and all so we're gonna go through a couple of questions and, uh, and, and I'll try to respond to them quickly so that uh, uh, we can uh, all head home and get a good night's rest, okay? But again, thank you very, very much. And Father, please express my gratitude, you know, uh, for opening the house. I'll, I'll start with the, the question that was about the upcoming extraordinary synod on the family. The question uh, was, do I believe that the extraordinary synod will confirm humani vitae? What I'd like to do is I gave this response recently and I wrote down my response and I'm going to actually return to it. Just going to put my little fingers on that. So the remember that 
the, the teaching of the church on contraception is part of the ordinary permanent magisterium. The church, the church before Humani Vitae had considered that physical barriers were immoral so a chemical barrier is also immoral because it also eliminates the procreative natural marital of, of the act of the marital union so some are trying to say that the magisterial teaching can change no, it's part of the ordinary magisterium of the church. It's non-changeable. Which means that, obviously, as Paul VI said, he was restating what the church has always stated. So no, I do not believe, I mean, I do believe that the, uh, the extraordinary synod and eventually the synod, the actual ordinary synod a year later, is going to reaffirm the dignity of marriage, the beauty of the conjugal marital act, and its two ends. So I know there's a lot of discussion, a lot of blogs, and a lot of different conversation. But the truth is still the truth. And if the truth is changeable, then it's not truth. Make sense? Second question. When we want to help a non-believer, let's say a non-Christian, a non-Catholic, believe about the dignity of life. What I was talking with Rachel and Nana last night about and, uh, I know it's late, so but I'm going to give a little philosophy. Okay, for a moment. We we refer to them as the, the the transcendentals. So we talk about beauty. Goodness. Justice. Love. Peace. Right. Now, what I want us to think about is the word beauty. No. Let me use justice instead. Every one of us gets upset when we see something done that's unjust. You can even see in a child that has not yet been taught a great deal of theology or catechesis. There's something within them that they know when something's wrong. That it's just not fair, it doesn't make sense. Because within the human psyche, soul, it's just understanding of right and wrong. It's ingrained in us. It's, it's a natural God-given gift to us. What we refer to the natural law, it's written on the human soul. The same thing with, 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 with goodness. You know, they, I was telling this last night uh, uh, because uh, uh, Deja Manada are celebrating their 41st anniversary, so we were talking about their marriage. And, and not particularly because of Deja uh, or Nada looking at Deja or Nada. 
But beauty is in the eye of the beholder. None of us in this room would be attracted to someone quote unquote ugly. So each of us perceives this word beauty. He's handsome, she's beautiful. We're attracted to beauty. So, I mean, even use a natural thing. Do I choose a rotten banana or a good banana? Unless you're strange and you like rotten bananas. And most of us are going to choose the, 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 the good banana, the, 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 the edible banana. You, you go to an apple and you see a worm coming out of it. Do you choose that apple or you choose the one that looks clean and fresh and firm? You, there's something in us that understands that there's beauty. We're always seeking beauty. This is how I work with a quote-unquote non-believer. I move them into this kind of conversation. And, and tonight, obviously, we don't have enough time to do that, but that's how I work with, not quote-unquote, a non-believer, meaning a non-Christian. I had the same conversation with a Muslim on a plane, 37,000 feet, uh, talking about uh, 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 the, the, the dignity of every human life. And we focused on that uh, five-hour flight on beauty and justice. I was hoping one of the transcendentals was silence. I was tired. But the Lord places me where He wants. Now, the next question was, how, uh, which is a very... Uh, the beautiful question is, how does a person who's not married open to life but not yet married you know, uh, respond to this desire to have a child, to, to promote life? Okay. It's a good question because it refers to a good. But the, the answer obviously would be is that the the gift of the conjugal act is to be shared in the sacrament or the sacredness of marriage. Not outside. So that would mean is that a person who is open to life, a good, a beauty, must, must pray hard to the Lord to find a good, holy spouse. So, that's the answer. Pray for a good, holy spouse. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a funny story. I was in Pueblo, Mexico, uh, the, uh, uh, at, a, at a Spanish institute, continuing to refine my Spanish. <laughs> and my professor uh, had two, uh, both were female, single. <laughs> my professor Christina, oh, that's going to be I hope she don't see this. Christina. <laughs> Uh, every afternoon we would go into the city for about four hours and speaking Spanish and just you know, talking about different things in the city and I, I'm a short man, I'm not a very tall man Christina was barely five foot tall and I'm dressed just like I am and here's this very beautiful 25 year old uh, beautiful Hispanic woman and we're walking down the street and everyone is just staring <laughs> looking at me and I had two religious sisters Franciscan by the way uh, I was sitting down like at a table having a cup of coffee with Christina so the, the two nuns are walking so she's, she's doing this doesn't see 
that she's walking into a huge magazine rack. Knocks it down, makes everything shake. And, and the idea was that she's, um, she, she couldn't understand how, what was I doing, quote unquote, with this young, young woman. Well, maybe I should have been a little concerned because as the weeks went by, I met Christina's mama. I was introduced to Christina's godmother. Now, I'm not speaking ill of Christina. She's a beautiful young woman. But through the whole two weeks that we were together in that, 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 that stand, every afternoon we would go to the churches and she would say, please pray with me to find a holy spouse. When I met mama, I had to say, hold on now, I'm not the holy future spouse here. And I jokingly told that to mama. She said, no, off limits. But, but just the, the idea that, you know, we, we must be true to our vocation and the state of our life as it is in that moment. But it was interesting meeting Mama, that was for sure. <laughs> Now the other question uh, revolved around population growth. The population growth is going to reach its, uh, this is again demographers, talking about how we're going to reach about the year 2040. Da bomo leta 2040 dosegli a uh, climactic point of the population growth. Torej uh, vrh uh, te uh, rasti prebivalstva. And then it is radically going to go down. Potem pa se bo to radikalno začelo spuščati. And why? Because the average age of most cultures around the world ker je povprečna starost v večini kulturah po svetu are getting older. It's called a it's called an inverted pyramid. So we all know what a pyramid looks like. Right? So a demographic pyramid talks about that the younger population always makes up the lower part of the pyramid. And then of course the older population resides here. This is what's happened. Your older population is here. This is what's occurring. So by the year 2040, we're going to reach that, that point. We're almost there, actually, because it's, it's increasing exponentially because of the continuation of the rejection of human life. So 2040 may be too far advanced. I think it's going to come earlier. Even some demographers are talking about it. Torej ni nujno, da bo to se zgodilo še v 2040, ne znam, ko bo tega Torej, tukaj ni v vprašanju prenaseljenost. It's a question because, again, and not that I'm going to suggest that we all move to the state of Texas. Torej, spet ne bom rekel, da se moramo vsi preseliti v Texas. But we could take the entire world's population and fit every human being on the planet in the state of Texas. And every person would have between around, somewhere around, 1,200 square feet of living space. That means there's room. So when someone says that we're overpopulated, that is a definite illusion, it's a lie. What we should be talking about is what John Paul said, that the greatest resource in the world is the human person. And how do we invest in the human person? My experience is revealed like in the Philippines. Torej povedal bo izkušnje s Filipino, kako vlagamo ljudje, kjer so področje z veliko revščino. Nimajo čiste vode. Slave prometne vzame. Zdravstvo slave. 
corruption within the government, the misspending of funding, the lack of adequate charitable work and care among the poor, to help better themselves and to give them the resources they need to better themselves. Seen in Africa and in different parts, I'll, I'll say this to you, that the average age of the human person was radically changed by one single thing. Clean water. Added 30 years to the average person's life. There are parts of the world where, you know, everyone's drinking from, uh, from filtered water bottles. Even in the major city of Manila, I just was there. I mean, no, even, even the local people are not drinking from tap water. So, I mean, there is a one, there are a number of great websites that are uh, dedicated, you know, to the discussion of population control that will give very, very clear answers on the illusionary language that we're hearing from population control groups. You will see them and they'll give them very clear. So um, I can give that to some of your pro-life leaders and, uh, and give you some of those websites to look at. Um, most of them obviously are in English, but uh, maybe some of the pro-life leaders can translate some of them as well, giving you some of that pertinent information. Torej pravi, da je veliko slednjih strani, kjer govori o tej iluziji nadzora, oziroma rasti prebivalstva, da je to v bistvu laž. And the, and the other question that, that emerged was about the, uh, uh, the regulation or fertility regulation within the family, in particular around a, a couple that's open to life, very receptive to the gift of life, but let's just say that, you know, that there is a medical problem. Let's just say that there are some issues uh, that uh, at that time would not be wise to, uh, to, uh, to conceive a child. And so there... And pull, uh, 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 John, John Paul II, as well as, of course, Humani Vitae with Paul VI, talked about great reasons to employ, you know, the, uh, the uh, natural family planning in a sense of regulation and, and following that natural cycle. But again, it, though that's a, it's a, that is a great reason. For example, let's say that Bob is, is married to Cindy and Cindy has cancer. Sorry. <laughs> Uh, torej govori bo o tem naravnem očakovanju družine pri paru, kjer je mogoče obstaja res kakšna zdravstvena razlaga um, in sedaj bo povedal en primer. So, the idea that the, the need for uh, chemo treatments, the need for intensive care uh, would be detrimental uh, to the life of, of, of a child that's, uh, that is gestating within a room, so it would not be advisable. Torej, um, Povedal bo to, kaj je Janez Pavel II rekel, se pravi, takrat recimo, kadar je ogroženo življenje matere, ker bi bilo treba recimo, da ima ona raka in mora iti čez kemoterapijo. So the beauty of cooperating in the natural biological rhythm of human life and natural family planning or marital continence, marital abstinence would be very applicable in, in that situation. Torej, v tej situaciji um, je and you know when people say well the because uh, people don't, don't think that couples and people can abstain let me give you a pop test and I know it's late in the night one of the gifts are fruits of the, uh, of the Holy Spirit What's, it's a very important one Self-control. So again, God gives us the grace we need to live our commitment. So it's cooperating with God. 
And another question was, is there any connection with pro-life movement and the theology of the body? Absolutely. I, I, you know, we, we tie in very beautifully the teachings of, of John Paul uh, in the theology of the body in the majority of the work that we do. I have not personally, another question was, have I participated with Christopher West? I, I have not had a personal conference or, uh, working alongside uh, Christopher, but uh, definitely we, I participated in the same conferences that he participates in, uh, in just not at the same time. So, the, uh, how about just one more? And I know it's uh, beginning a little after 10, and I was told to start wrapping it up. This, this question uh, goes back again. How do we deal with passion, attraction, feelings? And there's something in, in, in a Thomistic uh, teaching about the discipline of the appetites. Now, I'll speak for myself, so I, for myself, and not because I'm better than anyone else. Is, is learning the, the spiritual discipline of disciplining those appetites. In other words, I can't walk around, you know, blind because I'm afraid that I might see a pretty woman or I might see some, uh, and, and might have a bad thought. I, I see a few smiles in the room. But the idea is to think for a moment, how can I discipline my, my, my responses, my reactions, what I think, what I, what I gaze upon? So the discipline of recognizing, what a beautiful woman. Nothing wrong with that at all. Praise God for the gift of this beautiful creature. Now the discipline comes in after that. What do you do with it after? So it's not what goes into the person that makes them unclean. So learning to discipline the thoughts. And that takes a continue, continued growth constantly. Re re relying upon grace, relying upon the sacraments, the deep prayer life. So I don't have to give in to the appetite. Let's use gluttony as an example. Gluttony. Uh, Eating too much. Uh -huh. Uh, again, last night I had a chance to, to, to be at one of your uh, local restaurants. I, 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 was, I was given a little misinformation. Ah, now she caught it. I said, I, I, I want to try the local sausage. And I said, all I want is just a, a lake. Okay, something small. I don't want a big plate. Oh, you can order this plate. They come out with two by this long for me to try to eat along with these dumplings and it was all delicious. I know, I'm taught not to waste food. But at the same time, recognizing my own limitation. And so, again, exercising a sense of discipline. So it's something that we can employ. And we, but we need to seek it out. And exercise it. In other words, to make it happen. I mean, I'm, I'm a jogger. 
My travel schedule now doesn't allow me to do what I used to love to do so much. So if I wanted to start running 10 miles again, I would want to believe I could do it tonight. But I probably drop dead. Why? Because I haven't been exercising keeping up the routine. It's the same thing in the spiritual disciplines. You have to exercise it. You have to use it. You have to employ it. Okay? So, again, I, I mean, I thank you, you know, for, for your time. And what I would do is, the um, there are a number of questions, and I thank you for them, uh, but I know we're getting kind of late here, so... Okay. So, oh, I got most of them. Good. The, uh, but again, thank you for, for your time tonight. Thank you for being present tonight. Thank you for your commitment to life and family. And I, again, be assured of my prayers. Especially during Holy Mass, Adoration, Daily Rosary. I've had a chance to meet with a few of the uh, uh, pro-life family leaders. Tomorrow I have a chance again. And just try to find ways that, that HLI can help the local people here to, to continue to build that culture of life. Скушам само на еден начин како би Human Life International помагала луѓе од тука. So I I ask I ask a humble prayer from you as well. Тоа е тоа дека од вас просим да молите за мене. To pray for me in the work that the Lord is asking me to serve. За мене за тоа дело кои го бог налага мене. We're in this together. Утре се мал се скупи. So know my love, my care, my prayers. Моја любезен, моја скрб, моја молитва. And I pray that when our journey is over, uh, we all consider the Father's table. So if we don't meet again, I pray and look forward to meeting you in heaven. I go today if I could. Uh, could we say a closing prayer? How about I make it easier on the translator? Father, would you please have you come and say a closing prayer and give us a blessing? Sorry to put you on the spot, but you speak the language. Again, thank you very much for coming. Dobri oči, hvala za ta večer. Sem bila tukaj tukaj zbrani, da smo lahko ponovno slišali, misto kaj na meni našega življenja. Da se darujemo, da se podarjamo. Da smo tem podobni tebi, da se darujemo pri tvojem stvaritelstvu počrtu. Se ti za to zahvaljujemo. Pa te prosimo tudi, da bi imel pogu biti tisto, kar smo, biti tvoji oženci. Čeprav moguče, predvsem ljudi drugače misel, drugače razume stvari, Mar da se ne bi tega ustrašal, ampak da bi smelo živel, da bi izpolnjeval tvoja volja v tem času, kjer živimo, kjer smo. V Kristusu našem gospodu. Amen. Gospod z vami. In s vami. Naj vas bregoslovi vse na bočni bok, oče in sin in sveti duh. Amen. Vedite v miru. Bogu, hvala.